it's time. It's time to talk about J.P. Crawford. We only have two players left. Something tells me you can guess who the last player on this list is going to be. Again, we are going in order of lowest war to highest. And J.P. Crawford finishes with the second highest war total, according to baseball reference. Should have that figure in front of me. I don't. You'll be fine. You can look it up. But I do want to talk about J.P. Crawford, who had a sensational 2023. And I also want to quickly talk about Simply Seattle, because they had a sensational 2023 and a bunch of years before that as well. And 2024 should be pretty good, too. Great stuff. Uh, the very best in Seattle sports gear. Seattle Mariners, Seattle Kraken, Seattle Supersonics, Seattle Seahawks, Washington Huskies, Washington State Cougars, Ballard FC, Tacoma Rainiers. You can find it all at Simply Seattle. Find all that good stuff and use code MOLLYWAP15 to save 15% off your order. If you're curi curious how to get to that website and curious how to spell that, there's a link in the description. J.P. Crawford, 145 games last year, 638 plate appearances, 266, 380 on base percentage, 438 slugging. That's an 818 OPS, 19 homers, 65 RBI, two stolen bases. I don't think we can talk about J.P. Crawford without talking about the 2023 offseason because I think everyone, everyone was kind of hoping that we would have an improvement at the shortstop position. And let's look at what that free agent class had. It had Trey Turner, Xander Bogarts, Carlos Correa, and Dansby Swanson. Those are just listed in order of where I remembered them, not necessarily in order of how good they are, how good I expect them to be. Those are the four. And I think Seattle Mariner fans, for the most part, were anywhere from we need to explore this to please, Lord above, make this happen. Somewhere in between that. And I was much closer to the latter than the former. And while I will acknowledge, without a doubt, with everyone, with the possible exception of Carlos Correa, the Seattle Mariners are a better team if those players are on the roster for 2023 and 2024. Zero doubt in my mind. That is a compliment to those players more than an insult to J.P. Crawford, who was absolutely fantastic, especially at the plate. We'll go over the defense. But I don't think you can say enough good things about the improvement that this dude showed in 2023. A legitimate for a while MVP candidate. Leads all of baseball and walks with 94. And look, J.P. Crawford at one point, you know, he's a first round pick out of Lakewood High School. Develops into what? I believed at the time, at a, at a time, not the time, certainly not in 2017, but by the end of 2018 or somewhere in the middle of 2018, it's a little hard to remember everything. J.P. Crawford had developed into the best prospect in baseball. So it was never a complete question of talent. It was putting it together. And J.P. Crawford from 2018 to 2022, I'll give you his OPS pluses, 90. 86, 91, 102, 100. Anywhere from very average to below. 131 last year. That's well above average. While playing a premium position, and again, we will talk about the defense at that premium position. Let's look at these Savant rankings because <laughs> there's a lot of red, and I want to talk about some numbers that are in the blue that are actually just vast improvements and help explain how much better he was. So it, it starts with the walk rate. 14.7% of his plate appearances he walks. It's in the 96th percentile of all hitters. He swings at pitches outside of the strike zone only 18.6% of the time. That is in the 95th percentile of all hitters. When he does swing, he makes contact 81 0.4% of the time, or he whiffs 18.6% of the time. That's in the 86th percentile. Those are all in the red, the high red. And it's why his batting run value 
according to Baseball Savant, was great. It's the 27th percentile. 27 runs above, excuse me, 92nd percentile. And I'm going to give you the numbers that are in the deep blue. But they're not, I don't know the right way to say this, I guess, but they're in the blue. But they are such vast improvements, I'll tell you in a sec. All right, so expected slugging percentage, 384, 25th percentile. Average exit velocity, 88.3, 29th percentile. Only barrels to baseball, 4.8% of the time, 16th percentile. Hard hit percentage, 21st percentile. On the surface, those numbers are not impressive. You would not even bat, bat an eye at them. You know, you'd bat an eye and say maybe, ooh, those aren't very good. But let's compare that to 2022, okay? Because in 2022, hard hit percentage was in the fifth percentile, barrel percentage was in the fourth, average exit velocity in the third, expected slugging in the tenth. Those are awful. He still had those same rates, basically. He walked a ton, uh, whiffed similar amount. Actually, his strikeout percentage was much better in 2022 than 2023. But the offensive numbers were much worse because there was just no driving the baseball. And the fact that J.P. Crawford, yes, it's not elite. It's not even close to elite. It's well below average. But the fact that you had to have a reason to challenge J.P. Crawford was significant. Significance an understatement. The fact that you had to give J.P. Crawford pitches to swing at in the strike zone was massive. And also on the other side of the spectrum, the fact that you couldn't just throw fastballs to J.P. Crawford, the fact that he could actually drive those pitches changes the repertoire, helps the on-base percentage go up, helps obviously the slugging percentage go up because he was driving those pitches. It's huge. It's huge. I don't think we can overstate how important J.P. Crawford was offensively to this baseball team. Because there were a lot of guys who have good seasons. We've talked about them. Not enough, but some guys who had some solid seasons. Nobody showed more consistency in a good way than J.P. Crawford did. There were some certainly some guys who were consistent in a bad way. We knew what to expect from Colton Wong every night. We knew what to expect from Tommy Lestella and Cooper Hummel every night. The short time they were there. We knew what was going to happen with A.J. Pollock. Lots of consistency there. But J.P. Crawford was the consistent in a good way. I will say, though, there was a jump in the second half of the season. And the numbers bear that out. So J.P. Crawford, first half of the year, you know, he's having a nice season. We're pulling up the numbers. We're, we're doing things. If Wish we edited stuff, but we don't. First half of the season, 253, 362, 395. That's a 757 OPS. Take that all day from your shortstop, especially one that had not put up numbers like that in his career. But the second half of the season, 282. 401, 492. That's an 892 OPS. That's challenging for a 900 OPS. 11 homers, 17 doubles, 44 walks, and 289 plate appearances. You know, he struggles in May. Just especially April, May, June, he just wasn't driving the baseball at all. And it was the same concerns that I had with J.P. Crawford since he became the Seattle Mariners starting shortstop. Minus one thing that I'm still concerned about. But again, we'll talk about it. I promise we'll talk about it. 238, 373, 357 in April. 262, 339, 359 in May. 206, 340, 370 in June. But I think it's worth pointing out. In June... His batting average on balls in play was below 220. So there was some very bad luck there. July, 340, 443, 553. August, 281, 
427, 469. And then in September, and that little bit of October, when a lot of hitters were struggling, including the one we're going to talk about tomorrow, 259, 358, 500. Seven home runs in that final September, October. The Mariners are a lot of trouble without J.P. Crawford. They're in a lot of trouble without him. It's it's almost impossible to describe the improvement he made in 2023. And I love it. I absolutely loved it. In a year that, well, a year personally for me that stunk out loud. And in a year for the Mariners that was very disappointing. That's one. <laughs> I talked about the DePoto comment, that step forward thing, just absolute nonsense. Ain't nonsense for J.P. Crawford. Like step forward just doesn't even begin to describe it offensively. Something I would like to see next year. I would like to see J.P. Crawford continue to hit leadoff for the Seattle Mariners against right-handers. I would like to see J.P. Crawford hit ninth against lefties, and let me tell you why. I want Julio leading off against lefties for reasons that we will talk about tomorrow. He still gets on at a very solid right against left-handed pitching. Let me give you those numbers. Against righties, 266, 382, 463. That's an 846 OPS. That is beyond strong. Against left-handers, 267, 373, 382. So he's still getting on a very nice clip against lefties. The approach is still very solid. But he doesn't drive the baseball against left-handers. And I would like to have him getting on base against lefties at the bottom of the order and have someone like Julio give him a chance to drive him in. That's just my personal preference. I think he will continue to hit leadoff because they like him in that spot. They want him to draw pitches. I will talk about why I will not want Julio Rodriguez hitting second next year. Um, but yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Stop getting ahead of yourself, Chris Crawford. But that's what I would prefer. But I do think it is impressive that he could still get in on at a very strong rate against both types of pitchers. The, the difference in on-base percentage there is 0 0.009. Let's talk about the defense. I think this video has gone on long enough. But the offensive and the platitudes, that's basically all I've done is told you that J.P. Crawford was really, really good. J.P. Crawford's defense, in my humble estimation, was not. There are a lot of metrics that agree with me. Just using the lazy range outs above average, J.P. Crawford was in the second percentile in 2022. And in 2023, why are we talking about 2022, Chris? Come on. He was five in the fifth percentile, negative eight. And his arm strength has gone down pretty much every year. And his sprint speed has gone down pretty much every year. It matters. J.P. Crawford, if I had my pick, would be the starting second baseman for your Seattle Mariners. One of the reasons that it concerns me, and it's something that I do think hurt the Mariners in 2022, three, whatever year it is. It's a long week. The Mariners get a lot of ground balls, and that's great. You can't hit a ball over the fence if you hit a ground ball. You can't, it's harder to hit a double, you know, down the corners, of course, but very harder, much harder, very harder. There's a lot of hits that have been given up, up the middle. And I think J.P. Crawford is responsible for a lot of that. Now, he's made some spectacular plays, too. And I think he's pretty sure-handed. He makes some errors here and there. But his range is problematic. And I thought it was problematic in 2023. And I see no reason to think it's going to get better in 2024. I think J.P. Crawford would be a fantastic second baseman. I don't think he's a great shortstop. 
And I think the main reason that the Mariners have not upgraded at shortstop is the fact that they feel they can get by with it. And he has one of the most, I always struggle with this because I don't think it's one of the best contracts because, well, someday maybe I'll get into it, but it is one of the most team friendly contracts in baseball. There's just no denying it. JP Crawford is going to make no more than $12 million over the next few seasons. That's a steal. JP Crawford and Mitch Garver are basically getting the same money this year. And a while I like JP Car I like Mitch Garver a lot. JP Crawford is significantly more valuable than Mitch Garver. And the fact the Mariners don't have to pay a shortstop what a shortstop of his caliber deserves is a big reason why he still is the shortstop. Now he'd still be a bargain at second base, sure. But there's no denying that J.P. Crawford's contract is one of the reasons why he's your starting shortstop. And I am concerned about it. I try, I'm trying not to go too far, far forward because I'm going to do a bunch of preview stuff for 2024. But I, it is something that concerned me in 2024, and it is something I think hurt them in 2023. If this guy provided average defense, he's like a six to seven win player with that kind of on-base percentage and the pop that he did show. But he's not. He is a below-average defensive player. He's not a terrible defensive player. He's a below-average one. And my concern for 2024, I guess I just can't avoid it. My concern is that that's going to get worse. Just being honest with you. Very proud of my son. And I I just don't think you can overstate how big he was for the Mariners in 2023. If you wanted to argue that J.P. Crawford was the MVP for the Mariners, I would disagree with you. But I would totally get it. Totally get it. And I'm excited to see if he can make, take another step forward offensively. And I'm hoping that he can at least be where he was defensively at shortstop, or I sure would like to see him at second base. That's going to do it. Thanks so much for watching. Long video, but we had to talk about my son. He was just so good. Such a great year from such a, from all the people I've talked to, great dude. So very proud of my son. You can probably guess who's next. But let me know your thoughts. Please hit like and subscribe. It's been fun. We got one more left.